So, so um, Asif, uh, can you please tell me a little bit about the shim technology because you, you keep emphasizing on it? Sure. So shim technology for guys like you and me who are installers who, who, who um, you know, when I had my shop 15 years, one of the biggest things that was there is when a car leaves, you want to make sure it doesn't come back. And one of the biggest issues in brakes is noise that's there, right? So shim technology is something that's uh, probably one of the priorities in doing a brake job uh, for guys like us. One of the things that we do is um, we use um, shims that are typically used by an OE type setup as well. So um, you've used a lot of our product. You've always seen right. it on there. I don't know how many times you've actually peeled it off, but I actually have a piece of independent shim there. And I want to actually show it to you and have you feel the surface of it and see, like you can feel the rubber content right, on yeah. the surface of it. You can feel the weight of the shim. You can see that it's actually it's a very, product. very like durable. Exactly. So, the thickness of it is there to ensure that when brakes are applied and you actually have compression with the brake pad towards the rotor and the vibration, because remember as much as we all think the rotor is straight, it's straight but to a certain degree, there's always a little bit of play and that play when it moves, it creates vibrations much like a tuning fork, you know, right. you hit it and this is, so it's in, you know, in such a high, high pitch that we only hear that some, some volumes, the human ear can only so much. So we only hear it at some points, and the points that we hear it is what we want to eliminate. We don't want to hear it at all, right? So one of the things that a Simco does is, where applicable, we actually use a secondary shim. So you actually have a shim that's like this. Right. So you have a primary shim here, and you have a secondary shim here. Again, where OE does it, we try our best. I would say 90% of where OEM does it, we try to be there to make sure that we also provide the same thing in the aftermarket. So when you have one shim and another shim on top of that, it creates a better uh, NBH. Uh, you know, uh, suppression right. system. So for the for us, this is key. You know, and the secondary shim that we provide also. Um, again, I don't know how many of you users have felt the product or not, but um, you know, this shim as well. It's a nice, firm product. Yeah. Um, the way it actually comes on the brake pad is something like this, where it's clipped on to the surface. The primary is clipped onto the surface, and the secondary is clipped onto the surface. And when you take it apart, there's you know. You can see the primaries like this. So in this case, it's a vented shim versus a regular solid shim. Um, again, all based on how we can best suppress noise. So these, this is one of the biggest things that I've noticed a lot of a lot of installers tend to use, um, you know, quieting products that are there uh, to suppress, um, you know, noise. A lot of times you don't need that. Honestly, my recommendation to guys is always just get some of the purple stuff, the ceramic based stuff that's there. It's good, it resists water, so basically it won't slide off the pad and go onto the rotor and contaminate the rotor surface. So just take a little bit, look at where the contact points are of the caliper onto the brake pad, just brush a little bit on there, and that's it, that's all you really need. But shim technology is, I would say, one of the most essential parts of, of doing a proper brake job and making sure that you have a good product in hand and a, and, and, and a brake job that's gonna give you nice, uh, you know, uh, performance, good performance, longevity, and not have premature failure before it's time's done. You know? Right, right. Now, a uh, question, why is it that only certain vehicles get the double shim and not all? It's based on what the engineers, the OE engineers have designed. So I really can't go into what they've done, but to what I understand, it's the testing that was done, it's the, the, the engineering companies that were hired to actually do the testing and to provide the, provide the NBH. All I do know is that they ensure that whatever technology and engineering that they're therefore using and utilizing is meant to suppress noise. And we look at that and we offer the same thing because if they did it, there must be a purpose to it, right? Okay. So um, we, we go back into it and then at times we also see where we have to, sometimes even when a car rolls off the factory floor, there, there, there's issues. Remember, we all try our best to have the best product out there. Right. But sometimes there are issues that come up and they go back and fix. So when we see updates come in, we also apply the updates. Take charge. Yeah. Sounds good.